Hello, hello, everybody who's tuning in. We are live right now. Um, I'm Lauren. I'm with Reinventing the Tattoo and Raw Pigments. And today we are going to be speaking with Marlon Longart. He's uh, located in Sweden right now. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about a few of his pieces of work, his journey into tattooing and some future plans that he has um, coming to the United States and Europe and traveling. Uh, we're really excited to be here with you guys. Um, if you are beaming in, you might be beaming in from YouTube or Facebook or the Reinventing community. There's a lot of different places you may be watching in, but drop us a comment and let us know where you're watching. If you have any questions for either Marlon or I, please let us know. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to go ahead and, and dive right in. Hello, Marlon. How are you? Hello. Hello, Lauren. I'm uh, really good. And you? I am doing a little, a little nervous, but I'm doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too I, also. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to do today is kind of do an artist spotlight. You are with the Raw Pigments team. Um, I've gotten to know you a little bit through email and messages, but this is the first time that I've actually been able to talk to you in person, which is yeah. really great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm really happy to get the sponsorship uh, with Raw Pigments. I've been trying this pigment uh, like four months ago. And uh, the more I like for this pigment is the healing process. It's amazing. It's so fast. And uh, when you compare both pieces, fresh and healing is almost, almost the same. So this is awesome for me. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to show everybody some of your work from Instagram so that they can see the type of stuff that you do. And you've got great presentation. I just want to tell you that I really like your photography and um, your design process is very unique as well. So this is uh, a recent piece from May. For you guys? Yeah, yeah, this one was my favorite. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about that design process with your client? Um, yeah, sometimes uh, I get the customer, like uh, they say, I want something by your own version, or I get also something like when you see this uh, picture, you say, I want to uh, get like a Japanese style, but in realistic. So don't have to be traditional. But I want to get uh, um, something like a mask or ninja or warrior. So I told him, okay, let me fix. Um, this is the final. I can find this um, design here. It took like four hours to do to do to do that. Okay, and you're using um, you're using Procreate or Photoshop to do your designs? Yes, I'm using Procreate. Um, okay. I think it's uh, one of the, that uh, you can see it uh, a little bit. It's almost the same. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the reason I took a uh, route because it uh, gave me the chance to make the more similar as possible in the tattoo piece. Yeah. So I actually did not ask you what I was going to ask you. Um, can you tell everybody who's watching when you started tattooing and um, you know where you're at, where you're tattooing now? Um, uh, now, um, uh, you mean uh, locate location? Yep. Yeah. Uh, now in uh, I'm in Gothenburg, Sweden, is uh, is the second big city in Sweden. The first one is the capital of Kur, uh, Stockholm. But the second one is uh, Gothenburg. It's a really, really good city. It's funny. The people is uh, really, really uh, um, open-minded. Uh, everybody has tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's, this is nice when you jump on the train and you can see many people in summer with a sleeve tattoo, back piece throw face tattoo so it's awesome yeah around here uh where i'm at the, there are a lot of good tattoos but there are a lot more bad tattoos so um yeah 
That's awesome. And how, when did you start tattooing your career in tattooing? Uh, this history uh, became from a sack history in the family, but uh, this gave me the chance to grow up uh, from the beginning. And I like to do uh, draw and paint uh, for, I think, it, I think I born with this in my blood. <laughs> uh, when I was shy, uh, drawing everything. Um, yes, but uh, in the tattoo world, and I start exactly six years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, I get the decision. I took the decision uh, because I was studying in many universities and I didn't get the diploma. Um, I say, bro, <laughs> you have to come back to to your teens from the beginning. So get the art. Um, in this time, um, I was lucky because I stood with another tattoo artist mm -hmm. and he promised to teach me. Well, now I'm here. I, I have to say thank you to him because uh, he, he gave me the chance to, to start with a Chinese uh, machine, dressing <laughs> uh, and fake skin, you know. But uh, one year later, uh, I get the... SMS for him and say, bro, when are you gonna do your first tattoo? I say, ah, I'm nervous to do it in a in a in a skin. Say no, just get a, a someone. If this is a fucked up tattoo, just I'm gonna cover. I promise. Um, six years ago, I did my first tattoo. Another friends, and he put in the Facebook, uh, I want to get a tattoo. And I chat in private and say, bro, uh, I can give you the tattoo free. <laughs> but uh, uh, this was so funny. I took like three hours for do like a small um, music letters. I yeah. don't know how you got this. <laughs> but it was funny. Did you, uh, were you thinking you would like black and gray? Or did you think maybe you would be a color artist when you first started? Uh you mean when it when when it start from the beginning? Yeah, was mean... that yeah? Did you always want to be more with the black and gray? Is that? Um... Yeah, um, I think uh, I get a lot of influence uh, with the artists in my country. Uh, I'm from Venezuela. <laughs> I'm born in Venezuela, and we have a lot of tattoo artists. They make uh, really good uh, black and gray and, and pretty smooth shading. Um, this gives me the chance to. Uh, become better in black and gray. Uh, always I say I'm not the best in black and gray, but man, many people say, ah, oh, you are good in black and gray. But example, uh, my friend Moreno Aldo, his uh, black and gray is smooth. Uh, uh, even uh, uh, Albert Quintero, they are really good also. But uh, yes, uh, I want to try to get some piece I have the chance to make a fusion in uh, Switzerland with uh, a Spanish guy. Uh, we did color and it was funny. For me, it was funny. So I can do color. Uh, I know the technique. Uh, I take more time uh, than regular I, I take with black and gray, but it's funny. For me, I can, I, I can try again to make some piece in color. Yeah, I was I was noticing. I do like when you do add. You've done some pieces in red, which is definitely different from the black and gray I've seen. Um, yeah, one of yeah, the recent think, pieces. Yeah, I think when you put this kind of uh, piece uh, in your profile, give you give you give you a uh, another uh, view for the people when the people inside. So everything is black and gray, but if you put few or there are a few, few words in color. This give you more attractive to profile. But um, more than this, uh, uh, I like to work with uh, is I think it's, it's more, more impact in, in the view when you see the color. Mm -hmm. I have a few projects already start. Uh, I hope to finish this uh, before leave the country <laughs> because I, I have the plan to leave Sweden. Um, I'm really grateful for this country because it gave me the chance to uh, grow up. Mm -hmm. uh, when I when I came here, uh, uh, even I could I couldn't speak English. <laughs> oh and wow! Now I, yeah, and now I speak English a little bit. 
and uh, and my job and getting a little bit more professional. Yeah, I will show everybody uh, one of the back pieces you have in progress here. Yeah. That is, can you tell us a little bit about this piece? Uh, yes, uh, the design is my own from my own uh, version. Um, this guy is one of um, my friends here in Sweden. He's a Swedish guy. Uh, yes, I told him, bro, I'm gonna do. Uh, I want to do a uh, back piece. He said, okay, show me the design. I will say yes. I don't care. I know you are a really good black and great, and I want to do my back piece. And I did the the, the design uh, around in two days in a row. Okay. Because I'm changing a lot of things. Uh, even in the in the in the last session, I took the decision to change the down part because uh, it was so um, with many details, and I have to give uh, some skin time to mm -hmm. uh, get the permission to breathe the or make balance. Yes, but uh, finally I, I I got it the the spot, and uh, this is the result. Of. I yeah. think I did that in four session, something like that. Okay. It's about yes, 32 every hours. Session, yeah, every session has between seven or eight hours per day. Awesome. I love yeah, the negative did, space. Yes, it's really, it's really, yes, have a lot of contrast and a lot of skin tone, but they also have a pretty smooth um, part. I want to see this piece uh, healing. I think it's, it's almost the same, just uh, less redness. Um, uh, yes, uh, I did in four sessions, I did one Saturday, one Sunday, uh, we rest like one month, and then one Saturday and one Sunday, and uh, then finish this. So mm -hmm. I did one part, like a half back piece. And then if you see in my profile, I have the bit you want to start with this. I, I did a reel with this uh, back piece and you can see how is uh, the process with this uh, piece. Here, I will uh, show that in just a minute so people can see that. Actually, I'll show that in a little bit. We will, I wanna show a little bit more of the things that you're working on. This is an yeah. awesome one too. Composed well, it flows nicely. Yeah, uh, this is one of my favorite Wolf I did is, uh, because uh, show the more realistic I can, but uh, this happened when you took the pigments um when I tried with another pigments, I was uh, I was did good uh, tattoos, but uh, uh, the difference between raw and the another pigments is raw is getting in in, uh, in, uh, in a lot of skin. You know, um, sometimes when you get uh, brown skin or a little bit um, bright, uh, the tones working good or working more or less uh, good but uh, with raw uh, this uh, this tattoo is this is one of my favorite it's awesome i love the texture i love i just it's very nice the light is consistent throughout the whole piece as well yeah even that even the details in the mountains you can see the shading below mm -hmm. uh, in the bright parts also uh yes and i enjoyed a lot with when i did this this piece the the, mm, the down part was the first session i did the wolf in and around six or seven hours and then i took like three or four for make some touches and, and do the off part is uh, yeah in one time okay yeah <laughs> and then i like this one quite a bit it's just uh, really unique and i think that 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 smoke was probably really hard to do right through that forearm, but looks great. Yeah, um, I think this is one of my favorite too, because uh, when you do it, the smoke interpret way and the shading in the smoke is so difficult. 
and uh, you have to put the cyclic tone to replicate and make the effect in the skin. So, because the skin is it's a skin, so it's not a paper. So, so that uh, give you a, a little bit uh, difficult uh, process, but I, I got it. Uh, the guy say to me, I want uh, uh, with Khalifa, but I, I want with the smoke. Okay, no, no worry, I will do it. <laughs> and this is the result. Yeah, I actually uh, smoked with Wiz Khalifa on 420 in Red Rocks several years ago. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> that was a big experience for me. But yeah, this looks yeah. this looks pretty true to how he always always has smoke in his face. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really nice. And then this sleeve I love quite a bit. I love how you compose with intricate designs, but you still maintain that um, that flow. Uh, up towards yeah. the, the top with that negative space as well. Um, how did this design come about? Yeah, uh, this guy, uh, he came with me with just one piece, just one reference. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, in, in football, this guy, Zlatan, is okay. one of the, yes, he's one of, one of the more famous in the football. Uh, even if from Sweden, um the guy say i want a slatan with uh, a sparta or the warrior i did this if, if you see the video you can see how turn around the sleeve and how connect i did this piece in three days in a row three day in a row so the guy never complained the guy helped me a lot and uh, my customer was so so uh, good in this in this time I think yeah. this is the same one. Yeah. Yeah. Look how is the connection. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And healing the same, just less redness. Okay. So, yeah, as, as soon as possible, I will uh, start to post uh, many, many tattoos uh, they already did. But in this time, I will post a uh, healing, healing mm -hmm. tattoo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. I really love the, the feedback about the raw pigments because I know that uh, James definitely specializes in color development, which is uh, quite important when you're looking at uh, yeah. the pigments you know, going you know, into the skin. Yeah. You know, you know what is one of the more difficult uh, part when you do details in... Uh, in a, in a uh, low colors like extra light or light is so difficult to uh, keeping in the skin. So, but with uh, raw, you can do that. Um, when it's still done, it's, it's the same. That, that is one of the many reasons I love this ink. That's awesome. Thank you. I, yeah. I, James was gonna be here today, but um... He'll definitely be jumping in with us at another time. But yeah, I know that we spoke recently to kind of talk about something different about your plans to be visiting Europe and the United States. I, of course, am in the United States and I would love to see you. So um, can you tell us a little bit about your your journey to, to move around the world and explore with your talent? Um, yeah, um, I already started the last year. Uh, I was in uh, St. Gallen in Zurich, Switzerland. And um, after that, I have the plan to go to London and Paris and Germany even. Uh, but the pandemic uh, stopped my plans, stopped my trips. Um, I am here in Sweden uh, just uh, working and Starting with a new and uh, final uh, 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 all projects, but uh, yes, from around two years ago, I I got in mind to move to USA because I have family there. Um, I know uh, in USA you can explore more your talent because it's uh, I think it's it's one of the bigger country you can do. Uh, a really good art uh, 
I, I, I never complain about European because the people here is really accepted with the designs. And they always, when come to you, they, they bow art. And this is awesome. Absolutely. Uh, the, that's why it's, you know, it's hard to know when you're going to like the United States where, you know, how the clientele behave, what their expectations are. You know, everybody is a lot different. So it's taking a big leap of faith in yourself yeah. to, you know, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's even difficult for me because uh, uh, I think when you move, uh, actually, you go directly to uh, getting competition with the rest. So this gives you the chance to grow up more and uh, uh, even getting better. Um, I think it will be funny for my career to move to USA. Uh, I don't have the date exactly, but uh, yes, and I start to uh, uh, Recompile some uh, requirement to uh, get in the visa in USA. Yeah, that is a very intricate process to get the visa is not uh, easy or inexpensive. It does cost quite a bit, but that is, you know, a, a part of it for sure that you, you take on. Yeah, uh, take time. Um, you have to show your talents. and. Uh, it's not only like that. Is uh, even if you have a career in 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 your life in in the art, you have to show that. You have to demonstrate you you always uh, being like an artist. And if you have the talent, I think it's possible. But uh, yes, it's a have a few rules to follow. Even here, I can I can here with the uh, uh, work permission. So. Living here in Sweden is no is no easy, but uh, I get I get I got the the work permission two years ago. Okay, and then COVID kind of fucked that all up. COVID was, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so your your studio is open. How has that been? Um, how long have you been open? Did you have any lockdown issues over there? Um. This store is um, it's a new brand. Uh, one of the owner is like my friend. I met this guy three years ago. Uh, he had uh, um, another store before this, and he closed and he changed uh, the name and opened this brand uh, here in Sweden. He has uh, two uh, shop, one in Stockholm. Uh, is the city called Södertälje, so, Södertälje, Södertälje, um, and they won, yes, one one year, one year after they opened uh, in Gothenburg. So Gothenburg have like this, yes, it's very fancy. This store, it's beautiful. Definitely and uh, we work, yeah. And we work every everybody work in uh, in uh, own room, so everybody have their own room. And uh, this also because uh, the customer have uh, TV, have Netflix, and they have their own uh, headphones, so you can work good, and the customer is still uh, chill in the bed. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Uh, the videography and the, the quality of photography I see from every one of the Ink Nation studios as well as you has been really professional. I love the, the direction um, that that's taking. And I see that you have a camera right there on the desk. What is what is that about? <laughs> uh, yes, this is my my baby. <laughs> I, took <care> one. <laughs> I took one year ago. Um, from the beginning, I always I, I took pictures with camera. Um, I don't know if I can say the brand here, <laughs> but uh, uh, I was with Nikon and then jumped to Canon. And the last is a uh, Fujifilm, and mm -hmm. it's the 
is the last they uh, put in in the uh, in the industry uh, is 2020. So it's it's new. This is the the last they did. Uh, with this, I I do the videos. I do photos. Um, it's amazing. I've never used. Uh, I'm using a Sony right now, so it just looks uh, is as a really cool aesthetic to the the build of the yeah. camera. My, my friend, they, my friend, they have Sony. Um, we were three here in, in Gothenburg, and uh, uh, just and one the guy has uh, Fujifilm, but the, the rest uh, have Sony. So yeah, that's what I have. But the Fujifilm looks. Um, I really do like the quality that I'm seeing. So that's great advice to check out. The yeah, uh, the, this camera get sorry for interrupt. Uh, this camera get the, um, the first place in 2020, uh, less price and high quality. So that's why I get uh, uh, the first place in the in comparison with the rest. So because it, it's not too expensive, and uh, for the price is is amazing. And even the the um, the objectives, the lens mm -hmm. is even. Uh, from the brand, example for Sony, it's so expensive. Yeah. And uh, and from Fujifilm, is 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 more cheaper. Okay. What type of lens do you have on right now that you're using? Uh, this one is uh, 35 millimeters. Okay. Um, I have a CPL filter. Sure. Yeah. Uh, in the shop, I have the lamp with the filter as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I have another one, 23 millimeters. This is 35.4, 1.4. Um, the another one is 23, uh, 2.4. Oh, so, okay, so great with the low light. Yeah, this is a little bit more bright. You mm -hmm. can work it with the less uh, uh, light. And uh, I really like how it, how looking the, the pictures with the less light and uh, so it's even less ISO. <clears throat> yeah that makes a big difference i know clients really like themselves in a nice looking photo versus just a quick cell phone with trash in the background or whatever yeah. it might be i i think uh when you become a tattoo artist uh you have to prepare your career for everything so uh it's not even it's not only do a really good job but you have to support your job. You have to show everybody uh, how is your job. Um, if you have a camera, so you can show how how good is your tattoo in in in, in person. So that is the more near because uh, this camera is APCC. APC, yeah, APSC, and um, it's not full frame. So this is a new type. Um, 35 millimeters become like 50 millimeters. Um, mm -hmm. And when I was studying uh, photography and video in my country, the 50 millimeter is the lens more near to the vision from the human. So mm -hmm. this is this is really really nice when you take uh, pictures. So this look natural and the focus is just in the um, in the tattoo. Man, thanks for telling me. I was I've been curious about that for a long time. Yeah. 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 And the adjustment from full frame uh down is obviously gonna change yeah, the millimeter uh, size. Yeah, uh I think uh yes the the photography has a lot to learn, but uh, when you took a, a full frame, uh is this is this is more for outside for making pictures in the street, in the city, in the forest, you know, because mm -hmm. it's a full frame. But this kind of picture you can you can work in a studio, in a house, so even in, in, in the street, but the frame is reduced a little bit more. But sure. this kind of camera is amazing for posting Instagram, Facebook, in this kind of platform. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. So is this your first time doing any sort of live stream before? Yeah, this is my first time in even uh, speaking English, <laughs> my back, my back English. 
I, I think it's very good. Um, if we were to speak in Spanish, I would be very nervous today, but um, yeah. And, and your clients, do you get English speaking clients in Sweden? Um, uh, I'm lucky because Sweden have a really good um, education. Um, the people here uh, speak a really good English. Um, I think like a 19, 95% of the population uh, speak a really good English. Sometimes I get a uh, few customers like they don't speak uh, a good English. They speak just Swedish and I have to get in help with the manager. Um, but uh, mostly I get just the conversation. I meet the guys uh, or the girls. I spoke with them and then get the all information and start with the design process. Okay. And do you happen to ever go back to Venezuela to tattoo or anything like that? Have you been back since you started tattooing? Uh, uh, I have five years outside my five country. Years. Five years, yes. I have six years tattooing and I have five years outside my country. So I grow and grow up <laughs> outside my country. But uh, yes, always I have in mind to come back to visit. But uh, the situation there is um, every time is, is worse. So, uh, so it's difficult to also with the pandemic to try uh, to uh, travel to these lands. Because all Latin America now, they, they get the more high the, um, infected people, or I don't know how to say this in English. But um, yeah, it's difficult to go to Venezuela. I know Albert is there in tattooing. He'd be probably like to see you. He does some cool stuff too um, from the uh, raw team. Well, what, what, what do you mean? Sorry. Uh, Albert, got, uh... Albert Quintero. He's in yeah, uh, Venezuela. Quintero. Yeah, he's, a, he's really good down there. And I wonder how it is going for him. Yeah, uh, I, I met Albert like just three or four years ago. Uh, yeah, he's a really good artist. But uh, he has another style, I think, the, in, in the how work because he traveled more than me. So he always come back because he have uh, his own business over there. Uh, mm -hmm. He have the reason to come back. Um, instead me, uh, I don't have nothing to go there, <laughs> so just my family. But uh, I prefer to be here and work hard and uh, I can help them uh, over there. Yeah, do the, does uh, Sweden have any uh, tattoo conventions that you have gone to or they're planning to do? Yeah, uh, even I was with Albert in one of these uh, tattoo conventions. He, he took the first day, I think. Uh, we was in uh, Stockholm in Bach. Okay. It's a really big convention. Uh, and I remember in this convention was uh, many, many famous people. Uh, I remember Robert Hernandez uh, was uh, another guy. I don't remember the name right now. But uh, was at the Pancho. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I don't I don't get yet the the names, but uh, was few really big uh, guys over there, and it's it's impressive to share the same place with a really big artist. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was uh, so emotional. <laughs> but uh, in this time, I think uh, I go there, but I learned I learned a lot. Because at the convention is a stress, as uh, you have to be a warrior. You know, you have to mm -hmm. fight for you, for you, uh, for your peace and uh, getting wind. But I don't care. Uh, just I took this like uh, experience, and it was a really good experience. Even I was in a Venezuela tattoo convention. Okay. Before before go out. Uh, in Peru, also, I was in a Inti Tattoo Convention. I think it's one of the more important tattoo convention in Peru. Um, it was a really good artist also around around the world. Um, few in masters, um, and few big guys in Latin America. Um, that this is is 
this is a big world. <laughs> it, it is. The industry is, it seems to be big and small at the same time. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Do you have any um, American artists that you look up to that are maybe um, influential to you in your career from here in the States? Uh, um... Uh, I think I, I, I don't have, um, like right now, uh, or um, you mean like influence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, like two or three years ago, uh, I get really influenced for, um, um, I try to remember the name. Is this guy have the... Uh, Roman? Uh, Roman? Uh, yeah. 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 Him, um, Nick Hurtado, um, even Paul Good, because he uh, was a good guy in uh, Black and Gray also. I think the video stopped a little bit. I don't know the connection. Mm 